It's easy to start a blog, right? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become A Writer Today channel. I started my first blog back in 2014 and I started Become A Writer Today in 2015. Since then, I've published over a thousand different posts. I used to write all of these posts and content myself, but a year or two ago, I started working with other writers and it was only through doing this that I was dramatically able to scale the site in terms of an audience and in terms of revenue. I'd like to help you do the same. So in this video, I'm going to explain exactly what I learned from publishing over a thousand blog posts and what it would mean for you if you decided to take this step. Hope you enjoy the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up and to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If somebody had told me when I first fired up my WordPress blog that I was gonna publish over a thousand blog posts, I think I would have collapsed. It's an awful lot of work. Why would you publish so many blog posts on your site? And do you need to? And what happens when you publish this many blog posts? Well, here's the thing. If you publish a thousand blog posts or if you publish several dozen blog posts each month, or if you simply get into the habit of publishing consistently, you stand a much better chance of increasing traffic to your website. That's basically because you're taking more swings at the bat. You're giving your site more chances to rank for organic terms and keywords that your readers are searching for. Not only that, if you already have some traffic to your site, your content can help readers in different ways because you can start educating them about different topics that are relevant to whatever it is you're writing about or building a site about. When you publish more content and get more traffic, you can earn more money to invest in your business. So I monetize my site through display advertising. Display advertising networks like AdTribe, Mediavine and Google AdSense pay per 1000 views. So while I publish more content, and get more traffic, I earn more money from displayed ads. I earn low five figures a month from display advertising. I know some content publishers who earn high five figures a month from multiple content websites. It's not easy, but it is possible. You can also earn more money from affiliate products that you recommend or that you're happy to promote. That's because there will be more opportunities for readers to click and use your affiliate links to support your work and to support you. And if you're in the business of creating digital products like books, courses or other services, you can build up an email list much more easily because you'll have more traffic and then you use your email list to sell your digital products. In other words, becoming a content publisher is one of the best ways to build an online business, particularly for writers. So what does it take to publish over a thousand blog posts on a WordPress website? If you've no money, I'd strongly recommend creating a good early morning writing routine. I say if you have no money because I'm assuming you're not working with other freelance writers just yet. I find an early morning writing routine works quite well because normally when you set up a content or niche website for the first time, you're doing it around a full-time job and however you like to support your family. I found that when I put writing articles for my site off until the end of the working day, I was usually too tired or I'd procrastinate about writing them and just not published content at all. However, when I got up an hour or an hour and a half earlier, I could write an article for my site and configure it and lay it out and also schedule the post before work. It all started with an early morning writing session. It's basically a type of elbow grease that you can use to start getting your content flywheel moving. Think of it this way. If you write one 1,000 word article for five days a week, you'll have five 1,000 word articles within a week. Within a month, you'll have 20. And where will you be within a year? You will have traffic, you will have revenue, and then you can start working with other writers. So what does it take to publish a thousand blog posts a month on your site? Well, if you're starting out, I'm going to assume you don't have any money to work with other writers or to outsource content production. If you're anything like me, chances are you're starting your content or niche website, and you already have a job that you depend on to support your family. When I started to become a writer today, I was working a job as a copywriter and I found that if I put off writing articles for my site until after work, I'd inevitably be too tired and I'd say it'll wait till tomorrow. I only was able to get my content flywheel moving when I started getting up 30, 60 and 90 minutes earlier before work so I could write a couple of hundred words for an article for my site. And if you get up a little bit earlier by sacrificing Netflix or social media or news or just going to bed a little bit earlier, you can start writing several articles a week, several dozen articles a month, and you'll quickly get to over 100 articles. And 100 articles is all you really need to get, you know, the initial bit of traffic 
going towards your website and from there you can start to scale. But it requires a little bit of elbow grease and the best time to apply that is early mornings. If you're a new content publisher, I recommend focusing on low competition keywords. Low competition keywords basically describes keywords which big websites, news publications and so on are not going after. These keywords won't have a huge amount of search volume because they're not that competitive or not that commercial. This means they're ripe for the picking for a new content publisher. Now you can find these keywords in a couple of different ways. The premier SEO research tool for content publishers is Ahrefs. But if you're starting out, I know over $100 a month can be a lot to spend on an SEO tool. The good news is you don't need to. You can use tools that are specifically built for finding low hanging fruits. My three favorite three tools for doing just this are Keyword Chef, Low Fruits and Search Response. Using any of these tools for just a couple of dollars a month, I can find dozens and dozens of ideas for articles to create content about. And because these article ideas are low competition, these articles stand a much greater chance of ranking for my site or for a new site should I decide to start one. Also, when you get into the habit of using these tools, you'll naturally start to get a feeling for what your ideal reader is searching for and how you can help or educate or inform them with your content. Because if you want to become a content publisher, it's not about writing or blogging about your day, it's about publishing content that helps your readers. Use professional blogging software. I love tinkering with the latest writing and blogging tools. I've got extensive reviews about many tools on this channel which you should check out. However, if you're going to start a content website today, it should always be a self-hosted WordPress website. Yes, there are other tools that you can use which work for different business models, including Substack and Ghost. But if you want to build a content website that's monetized through affiliate promotions or display advertising, it's easiest and fastest to do it with WordPress. I use WordPress for all my sites, apart from a newsletter project, which is a little bit different to what I'm describing here. In terms of actually writing articles yourself, find one tool that works with your writing workflow and stick with it. That said, here's what I use. I currently write my articles in Ulysses. I use Ulysses because it supports Markdown. That's basically a way of formatting content for the web using a series of hashtags, asterisks, and so on. I have a video all about Ulysses on this channel. Basically, I can write an article quickly in Ulysses and press the publish button and it'll upload straight to my WordPress website. I also use Grammarly extensively to edit my writing and writing by other writers. I've installed Grammarly locally onto my computer so it can scan through my first drafts in Ulysses, fix typos, spelling mistakes, and revise some sentences. I've tested all of the grammar checkers out there. To be honest, Grammarly is the number one grammar checker that you should try. And I have videos and discounts on the channel that you can find and I'll include some links in the notes below this video. I'd also recommend investing in some email marketing software at some point so you can distribute your content. I use ConvertKit. It's not necessary to use ConvertKit, but find one that works well with your WordPress website. Once you've picked a few different tools and an SEO tool, stick with them. There's no need to procrastinate by looking for one tool and then a new one and a new one. Your job as a content publisher is to write and to publish as often and as frequently as possible. So eliminate any bottlenecks. Stop writing all the content yourself. When I first started becoming a writer today, I wrote all of the articles myself. Naturally, over time, a couple of articles about grammar started to rank and become a writer today. I was pleasantly surprised by this, but there was just one problem. I'm not a grammar expert. And I quickly saw opportunities to publish other articles about specific grammar topics. Unfortunately, I didn't know what to say in these articles because I just don't know enough about grammar beyond enough to get by and to write and to publish effectively. So I went out and I hired an expert grammar writer who knows far more about the rules of English grammar than I ever will. She writes articles for Become a Writer Today once a week and these articles rank quite well in Google and they help the site attract more traffic. But not only that, her articles are informing and educating readers in a different way to how I could do it. So in other words, hiring this grammar writer was a step for me in separating my personal identity from the site. Once you have a little bit of income uh, coming into your site from affiliate promotions or display advertising or whatever it is, the number one way that you can remove a bottleneck on your publication workflow is by hiring a second writer and then you can scale from there. Budget for content. 
Several years ago, I took a course by the legendary screenwriter, David Mamet. I've no ambitions to become a screenwriter. I just like hearing about how other writers think about the creative process. One particular lesson in this course struck a chord with me. David Mamet explained that a writer or an artist should work on their art every day and work on their business every day. If he or she does one thing for their art and one thing for their business, they'll never go broke and they'll never have something to say or to release out into the world. So what I recommend to you is to write one article or work on one article or do something that involves writing every day for your content website. But you should also do something that grows your business in some way. For you, that will mean budgeting for content. So once you start earning two or three hundred dollars a month from display advertising, which is very easy to do, allocate some of that budget towards commissioning articles by another writer who can help you scale your site. And as your revenue starts to increase over time, simply adjust your budget accordingly. Once I started earning several thousand dollars a month from my site, I was able to quit my full-time job. But before I had did that, I had to budget for paying myself. I had to budget for running the site, for example, hosting, stock imagery, and so on, and budget for outsourcing content to other writers. Now, if you need help with your content budget or if you need help sourcing writers, there's three services that I recommend using. You can find excellent writers on the Pro Blogger Jobs Board. You can sometimes find expert writers on Upwork, although you will need to vet your candidates. And you can also use a service like Writer Access. I've used all three of these to find writers. Typically, a rate for a good writer will range between six and 10 cents per word. Yes, you can pay less using other services, but I find the quality dips quite a lot and the work requires much more editing. And well, it's not really worth the effort. Hire an editor. By now you should know what content is ranking on your site and you should have some sort of workflow for hiring other writers. Chances are up until now you've been editing all of this content yourself, perhaps using, using grammar checking software, but at some point more articles will be sent over to you than you'll have time to edit and review. At this point you may want to consider promoting one of your writers to the role of editor because they will understand your workflow, they will understand your site and they will understand your site's tone of voice. When I started publishing dozens of articles a week, I found that hiring an editor dramatically removed a bottleneck. Now I can spend more time writing articles that I'm interested in or more time researching articles that I want to commission. And I don't have to spend as much time editing work by other writers. Now I know it can be a bit strange handing off this part of the business. So what I recommend is when you're vetting a new writer, consider editing the first few articles yourself so you get a feel for what the writer's work is like. Then when you're happy to work with them on an ongoing basis, hand over the editing of their work to the editor that you've hired. This way you'll be able to scale your content website or content business much more easily. Create a publication workflow. When you're publishing content at scale, it's not good enough or it's not helpful to just simply have a list of topics that you want to write about. You're gonna need some way that you can visualize the status of each article, who's working on it, and if it's in draft, editing, or published. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. The tool that I use the most is Trello. It's pretty easy to use and I found that most writers and editors are already familiar with it because other clients use it. And you can also try it for free. Basically, I have three different columns on Trello with some variations depending on the content website. The first column simply has a list of articles to do or to write or to commission. The second column has a list of articles that are in publication and I can see which writers are working on them. And the third column has a status for the article if it's been edited or published. So I can simply move articles from the left of the Trello board to the center and to the right. And that way you can visualize the progress of each article over time. Now I found that once I got past several hundred articles published on the site, Trello was great for managing the publication workflow, but I still needed a type of content database. So I have one master spreadsheet that lists out every article published on the site who wrote it and when it was published and what the keywords are. So this way I can refer to this spreadsheet to avoid duplicate content that is commissioning the same article twice. And I can also refer to Trello when I can see who's working on a particular article. You don't have to use either tool, but I found that most content publishers tend to default to Google Sheets and to some sort of project management tool like Trello. Track your progress. Once a week, I'd encourage you to step back from writing, commissioning, editing, and reviewing articles. Ask yourself a couple of questions. How many articles did you write this week if you're the only person producing content for your site? But more importantly, how many articles did you publish? 
because this isn't literary fiction. Your job as a content publisher is to publish early and often. No, I don't mean publishing garbage, but you simply need to get into the habit of publishing more frequently rather than publishing your first drafts. And then of course, when you're working with other writers, how often did you publish on the site becomes more important because you want to gauge if some writers are delivering articles on time or if there's some sort of bottleneck that you need to solve. I recommend setting a target publication goal each week. You may, for example, say I'm going to publish five articles per week on my site or 10 articles or 15 articles. Pick a number that works for you, your budget or your publishing cadence. And this way you can project out over time how long it will take you to hit larger milestones like 500 articles or perhaps even a thousand. It could take months, it could take a few years depending on your budget, time and energy. But it's best to step back every now and again and ask yourself honestly if you're making real measurable progress on building your content website. Publishing content at scale is work. I won't lie, there were some mornings when I'd rather spend time writing than commissioning and editing the work of other writers. However, I still wish I had decided to scale become a writer today sooner. That's because deciding to scale content production on my site dramatically increased the revenue, it dramatically increased the amount of readers who were finding the site, and it turned it into something that was more than just a personal project. It turned it into a full-time business. I realize that a thousand articles might seem like a lot when you're starting out, but if I can do it, any writer can do it too. But it all starts with writing that first article and then getting into a cadence of pressing publish early and often. Hope you enjoyed the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this, or if you've got questions about the building a content business, let me know in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.